Elizabeth. I think you might be one of the few people I know outside a school administrator who actually reads through the entire regulator guideline on COVID management. The document seems rather clear, but as you and I receive information daily, we know that school responses can vary so much. Can you name some examples of variants? Do you know of any school with a COVID task force? In terms of variants, for example, on communication, some schools disclose which class is affected, while some don't. There are schools that provide a more personalized communication to parents of students who were in the same class as the infected person, even though these students are not categorized as close contact, while some don't. On testing, there are schools where the whole class was asked to go for testing, while others don't. Next would be on school closure or class closure and quarantine. You know, when there is a case, we've heard of、uh, why this school just closed a class while the other one closed the entire school. We have come across schools that outline the number of quarantine or observation period that the infected person will have to go through, while others don't. So. Parents tend to compare and question the inconsistency practiced by various affected schools. I suppose it's not easy trying to balance between、uh, being transparent for better contact tracing to protecting the privacy of the infected person. As for the COVID task force at school, I would like to think every school would have one. I suppose the question is the credentials of the individuals forming this said、uh, task force. Are they, first of all, health and safety trained to now also have to deal with the considerations of uh, uh, COVID-19 risk? Since、uh, battling the pandemic requires、uh, cooperation from all parties. I would、uh, even question if the task force includes、uh, representations from the parent body and even the student leaders as well.